At first it was, you know, 50 people are on there. Well, you know, we, that's, we can do that. We can have two services. That's, that's easy to deal with. Um, but when they dropped it down to 10 or under, that made the, the situation a whole lot harder. My family's six plus our sound guy is seven. So that means three people can come to church on a Sunday morning. What I started to notice after two weeks was the breakdown of the church and the breakdown of the community that God has called me to. And that really bothered me. So I just told my wife, I said, let's pray about this and see what God would have us to do. But as for now, I think we should just have church and do it the right way. So the precautions that we took, uh, I, I think were second to none. We had service master coming in, cleaning our building twice a week before every service that we had. We had people lining up outside 45 minutes before the doors opened to, to come to church at a place that they can worship. We opened church the following Sunday and we had you know, 60, 70 people in church. Um, it was absolutely amazing that there was six cop cars up the street, six cop cars down the street, undercover cop cars all around the church. Uh, then exactly at noontime, the mounted police walked in front of our church uh, with their horses. And I thought, wow, this is, this is pretty amazing just for having church. The following Monday, the chief uh, showed up at my house and he gave me a ticket uh, and they filed one criminal complaint against myself and against the church. We needed help and God brought the reinforcements and the reinforcements were MFI. I represented Pastor Casey and the Adams Square Baptist Church in the federal litigation against the governor and the city of Worcester. I had the sense that they had quickly organized churches into, into, into later phases, not based upon any constitutional analysis, but just on a secular analysis of what it looked like, like a, like a movie theater, everybody just sitting in rows. With regard to church, uh, uh, it is constitutionally protected, so the government may not infringe upon it any more than is necessary, and certainly not any more than, than other activities like you know, going to Walmart or, or, or going to the liquor store. I understand what the order says, but we're having church because church is essential. If the big box retailers can be open, if the liquor stores can be open, if the abortion clinics be open, why cannot church be open? And so I saw all these inconsistencies and yet it seemed like all the places that were generating money and revenue were allowed to be open, but a place where there was spirituality could no longer be open. The police and the mayor uh, decided to uh, single him out and, and, uh, and, and not allow him to uh, freely exercise his religion. We wrote a letter to the governor, but of course it was ignored. Only alternative was to, was to uh, proceed with litigation, which we did. Nothing gets one's attention or, or focuses one's attention like a date with the federal judge, uh, you know, in an afternoon hearing. The uh, assistant attorney general uh, called me to negotiate what the new order would look like and how churches were treated. And uh, I indicated that I thought uh, that 40% that made sense, that church should be treated as a, as, a, as a phase one entity instead of what I feared was going to happen, which was uh, that it would be treated as more like a phase four kind of activity. On Monday the 18th, uh, a revised COVID order came out, which allowed uh, in phase one churches to assemble at 40% of capacity. By Monday, the governor came out and said, uh, you know, churches are open. We're not going to uh, go after uh, Adam Square Baptist Church anymore. And they backed down. And so we, we took it as a, a great victory. Massachusetts Family Institute jumping on this and, and putting together the resources that were necessary to act quickly and locally uh, gave us a seat at the table so that we had a way to make clear to the government what the critical interests of the churches were and, and to have a, a say in what that was going to look like. And it had an immediate impact. Some of the great things that we had from church is that uh, we actually had a baptism in the midst of uh, this quote unquote pandemic. Um, and church was essential because you can't baptize someone in a Zoom meeting. To have MFI and, and Carl do all the work that they did was truly a blessing to help us because, you know, we're, we're a church. We don't know the, the legality of the laws and who to talk to or who to, to, who to consult, but uh, that's what an attorney's for. And so to have that protection uh, was truly amazing. And that's, that's what uh, one brave pastor and a, a attorney and, uh, and an organization like MFI can do.